In the two previous videos, we have looked at how life first began and how it became multicellular. But next we're going to be considering what it's like to be alive, what it is to be a self-aware animal, and what it's like to be conscious. But just what is consciousness? Are other organisms conscious? How did it evolve? And can we replicate it? These are the mysteries of life. Defining consciousness is hard, as there is no set definition all scientists agree on, but the basic one is performing an action and being aware of what you're doing. This is the most basic form of consciousness, but this means that different animals will experience it differently due to number of limbs and brain function. The best theory of what consciousness is, when looking at it in a biological manner, is the different areas of the brain communicating together. This theory is backed up by the fact that when put under general anaesthetic, the functions of the brain become very isolated, and there are no longer any neurological signals going long distances between different areas of the brain. However, when the opposite happens, and someone has a seizure, brain scans have shown that the signals become very synchronised. This evidence seems to support the idea that consciousness may be down to the way that different regions of our brain communicate and function with each other. In any case, the brain and its functions are certainly very closely involved with consciousness. For animals, however, this may be very different. Take the octopus for an example. It is intelligent and has eight tentacles, which it controls all at once. It uses its tentacles to interact with its environment, and this may show consciousness. However, octopuses do not have the long distance connections that human and other mammals have in their brains, and many neurons in an octopus actually lie outside the brain. This means that their conscious mind is far different to our own, and the way in which they experience life would certainly be very distinct to our perceptions of it. There is also the possibility that maybe they're not even conscious at all. The difference between intelligence and consciousness is another topic of debate, although the main difference can be summed up well with apes. If an ape uses a tool to get food, it is a sign of intelligence, but consciousness is the ape understanding and knowing it was performing the action. The difference between instinct and consciousness is also very interesting. If you touch something hot, instinctively you will pull your hand away, but you can override instinct and keep your hand there, that is a sign of your consciousness. Emotion is also an expression of consciousness. Elephants and whales are known to display behaviour suggesting that they are saddened by the death of a family member and show emotion. This means they understand that the dead will not come back and they had an attachment to the individual, not out of a survival instinct, but out of an emotional, conscious one. Another part of consciousness to consider is the line between conscious and unconscious thoughts. If you think about lifting your arm and envision it in your mind, your arm does not move, but when you need to move your arm, it does without you thinking. All you need to think is, hey, I need to lift that jar off the shelf, and then your arm does it. You don't think about moving your muscles in your conscious thoughts, you only think about what you need to move them for, and then your unconscious mind moves your muscles. Dreams are another very interesting example of the conscious and unconscious mind. When you sleep and you don't dream, you're in a state of unconsciousness, where you can't remember what it's like, there's just nothing. However, you can also have dreams when sleeping, and this is actually conscious thought, as you're envisioning the dream in your mind and you see it and can recall it after you wake up. Yet again, no one really knows what dreams are, or what causes them, but studies have shown that people who don't dream experience increased levels of anxiety, hallucinations, and lack of concentration. This has led some researchers to believe that dreams are an essential part of human life. As far as theories of how consciousness evolved go, there are not many particularly convincing ones. One of the better ideas is that as humans gradually developed to become more intelligent, we started taking in too much information, and to understand it, our brain had to evolve different and more complex ways of processing and remembering that information. Consciousness could have evolved as a way to allow more attention to be given to a task, by allowing us to have an awareness that the task is being performed. Artificial intelligence is a very hot topic these days, and people are striving to create a fully conscious AI. However, this is proving very difficult, since we still don't know what it is actually in humans. Most of the time, humans take in information and act on their judgement. If this is consciousness, we may be able to replicate it in machines, by giving them massive amounts of knowledge and information, so it could form judgments and act upon decisions by comparing past outcomes and events. 
By some definitions, this would be a conscious robot, but humans don't always reach rational decisions based on facts and experience alone. A lot of the time, emotions get in the way, and those are much harder to give a machine, as many human emotions are due to hormones and chemical reactions, as well as our desire as animals to mate. This just can't be replicated in anything except a living thing. So machines can never truly be conscious. They may just make decisions that they decide are best depending on previous outcomes, and that just isn't what it's like to be a human. Consciousness is just too complex for us to replicate at the moment when we don't fully understand what it is to be conscious ourselves. Though we know more about the human brain than ever before, we still have a long way to go to truly understand it. There is the endless fight between science and philosophy to understand human beings and what it is to be one. In 1994, a man called David Chalmers, a philosopher in the US, ignited the war over consciousness and talked about what is called the hard problem. Why do brain functions make us feel anything? Why, when we think about a loved one, does a series of electrical signals make us feel happy or sad? And what is happy and sad? And so began the debate, with scientists arguing it's all a series of chemical reactions that release different substances or that we feel pain because we need to survive, and philosophers arguing that it's much more than that, and even some theorising that consciousness is a law of the universe, like electricity or matter, it's just there. In the end, consciousness is a paradox, an endless loop of hows and whys, and it may, in fact, forever remain a mystery of life. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you would like to learn more about our world and explore more mysteries of life, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the rest of this series.